workshops, workshop on connected uh, freight, uh, we represent uh, only 2% of the papers uh, that uh, were presented in this conference. Uh, however, we had a very, very exciting uh, sessions, and uh, this was due to our reporters. We had five reporters and uh, some very active uh, participants. I would like uh, to mention Shadi and uh, Carlo among those. Uh, we had uh, around uh, 12 participants or 15 in the first uh, uh, workshop and uh, around um, maybe eight or 10 in the second one. Uh, so I would like you to introduce you to this uh, amazing world of freight that we believe that in the next uh, IATBR should have at least, let's say, a 10% of the papers uh, representing. Uh, so we are moving to a new era fro to, from uh, globalization to mass indiv individualization of uh, change. Each uh, of uh, us uh, want uh, a different uh, um, uh, subject uh, based on, uh, on uh, their needs uh, and customized uh, to uh, their uh, objectives. Uh, so we have to produce uh, products and transfer them uh, all around the world in order to satisfy the needs of the customers. And uh, here we have what's going on uh, in terms of the uh, global uh, supply chains. And we have uh, these uh, big ships now um, that uh, can carry, that are 400 meters long, can carry um, 2 million, 2.5 million TUs. Uh, and they are comparable with the other modes of transport uh, that uh, we have uh, in, uh, we have uh, been dealing in this uh, conference uh, compared to 1,000 Boeings, uh, uh, 35 ton, uh, 80,000 feet long trains. Uh, 11,000 uh, heavy trucks, so um, we can uh, see that one big ship uh, can basically transport uh, uh, many, many goods, uh, and uh, this, of course, uh, creates uh, um, uh, special needs uh, in our ports, uh, so we have a very strong competition of ports, and um, this also creates uh, a lot of uh, traffic congestion around the ports, but also within the ports that uh, us as transport engineers and behavioral model modelers uh, should uh, tackle. And this also causes major environmental uh, uh, effects or concerns. Uh, we have the new freight technologies, we, are, we have the drones, we have uh, travelers uh, freight uh, uh, rail, we have uh, uh, the autonomous uh, trucks, and uh, we have new ways of delivering such as uh, cr crowd shipping with a lot of uh, companies uh, uh, doing that. Uh, and we have the next big thing, which is called the physical internet. Uh, uh, it starts with Pi, uh, Greek, um, uh, a Greek um, uh, word. And uh, Pi, uh, within Pi, uh, cargo will be sent from an origin to a destination without delays with the optimal cost and sustainability levels. And this is how uh, the, the goals are up to 2050 uh, to reach uh, this uh, goal. So saying all this, um, we have on the other side uh, different decision makers, and that's what complicates and makes uh, decision making in freight, uh, in, in freight so complex. So we have multiple decision makers from shipper to carrier. We have uh, producers, we have consumers, we have uh, uh, sales managers, we have uh, logistic service providers, uh, we have transport managers, for freight forwarders, uh, planners, uh, drivers, and each one of them have multiple decisions and. Uh, uh, the, these decisions are correlated uh, with each other and um, uh, definitely we have uh, consumer choices uh, and we have different modes of uh, transport to choose and uh, routine and scheduling, time of departure, capacity planning and all, all are these uh, things uh, that we as uh, transport uh, and behavioral models should uh, be able to um, tackle. So the big question is, why is that uh, behavioral modeling so, f so limited in freight transport? Why do we have so few papers in this uh, uh, conference? 
And uh, the main answer that we discussed uh, during also our workshops was because uh, um, so far uh, freight is related uh, um, mainly uh, to simulation and optimization techniques. And uh, right now, little by little, we start uh, introducing um, behavioral models. And uh, uh, the main reasons uh, for that is the lack of understanding of uh, the behavior of the decision makers. It's much harder to reach the freight forwarders. It's much harder to reach the port operators uh, to ask them about their opinions or conduct uh, a lot of surveys in order to develop our models. And uh, the other uh, reason is uh, the difficulty in getting uh, data and information uh, because of uh, privacy issues and uh, um, the uh, need to um, not and not uh, the effort to collaborate uh, so much uh, within in, uh, each other the, these uh, decision makers or with us uh, the modelers so uh, we have identified several uh, challenges and I will invite uh, one of our reporters uh, Rodrigo uh, Tapia uh, to um, discuss the challenges we have identified. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Well, um, one of the main challenges that uh, were discussed on some of the approach of the maybe different nature of the, um, of the modeling in the freight issues is that the encounter of multiple actors during the decision process and also sometimes the difficulty to identify which actor is the, the one that makes the, the meaningful choice in that, in that scenario that we want to model. For instance, we have shipping lines, stevedores, import exporters, freight forwarders, containing yard orders, port authorities, consumers, uh, inland freight providers, rail operators, and many more, even truck drivers. Also, the data sources, there are some challenges not only to gather data that is, I think it's a challenge for everybody, this, um, but there are some particularly due to, mostly for privacy, you should not want to share, you know what to share, and the competitive advantage that each company has to do the importance of data, yet there are a lot of opportunities and challenges to address and have to use big data, GPS data for, for instance, trucks, uh, routing, um, data from, software from transport management system that that's, is information that uh, private companies own, yet no sh not sharing, and a lot of ne network data, how to, how to interact, how to process, and how to make that uh, operational for modeling. Uh, the models also to, to imply it's basically uh, the use of part of, um, of passenger, use passenger um, developed uh, models applied to freight, like uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, a lot of operational research models, especially for the last mile delivery and how that uh, this behavioral model can interact with, with those. Uh, game theory due to the multiplicity of, of actors. So also an, a part of the challenges is uh, trying to address the new uh, freight that is coming. So, so it's the new ways, uh, modes of transport such as the impact of automated or autonomous trucks, uh, the effect of truck platooning and cooperation among truck drivers has to reduce trans uh, freight costs, uh, automated terminals, how, how, to, how to make it uh, more, more efficient for, uh, for transshipping. It's also rail train tables and effective use of rolling stock and how that um, impact or, or refers to, to the behavior of freight forward operators and consumers. Um, also, the opportunity or the appearance of uh, smart apps has to help with cargo consideration and cooperation within different uh, freight providers. Also, eco-driving and fuel saving. This is also relating to track platooning. Uh, also, there are some changes in global supply chains. This is um, addressing at a more international uh, level, such as uh, individualization of supply chain. And this more customization for uh, demanding of the demand of, of each consumer. Crowdsourcing just to how to deliver the last mile, for instance, this, uh, that will be also addressed a little bit forward. 3D printing and this uh, potentiality that it might have to interfere or to disrupt classical global supply chains to go into more local production or ensembling. Also, modernization that 
that uh, impact. Also, it was addressed, or was mentioned in the discussions, um, the issues on humanitarian logistics and supply chain resilience. It is um, a global change, uh, global climate change is bringing new, uh, new stress to the global supply chains, new problems that uh, must be addressed and how that affects the behavior on the risk management of the different uh, freight actors. And also understanding the implications of the, the supply chains, for instance, the empty trips, how, can, um, how, how we can uh, avoid and de um, diminish the, the empty trips, uh, the impact of freight on congestion and all the vessels of services, not only for freight, but also interaction with passengers. Um, safety issues um, in, in highways regarding trucks, environment sustainability is one of the, um, the freight sector, it's one of the biggest pollutants, and yet, well, we get little papers on, on the conferences. Uh, these were the six papers that, um, that fueled the discussion on, on freight. There were some, some on waiting of uh, behavior on port, con uh, port terminals, some of uh, crowd shipping, some on automotive vehicle, some of, uh, about regional, such as the US trade flow or um, understanding the behavior of modern port choices. And this led the discussions on four different topics that uh, I will detail now, and then this will show into the, the projects, more or less, that were highlighted. So in the issue of global supply chains, the decision makers could be the shipping lines, the stevedores, or anybody that um, are part of the supply chains. The choices that can be modeled or um, interesting, uh, or could be interesting to, to understand how, how they work is strategic alliances. How do you choose your business partner or uh, how do you build these trust um, relationships among all the the parts of the supply chain, how does good, understand how good movements work on, which are the interactions, how, how the decision makers, being this manager or being the consumer, influencing mode choice, influencing the adoption intermodality or greener modes of transport, which factors do affect the decision maker, that's also part of the discussion, for instance, commodity type, uh, the time of day, for instance, the for the time of pickup in, in ports, when, um, how the behavior, how the importer uh, uses the yard and when they, they pick up the, the goods, and this it has a direct impact on the efficiency of the ports and, the, um, and its uh, money waste, for instance, um, which infrastructure is available or consuming. This, is also, this could also be related to what part of the keynotes said about uh, the choice sets, consideration, or even availability. Models that can be used would be agent-based models, uh, could be that part based on discrete choice, with interaction with operational research and machine learning. And the key barriers identified were the lack of shared information, this competitive interest in that um, I don't want to share my data in case uh, I lose some advantage for, for my business also cultural and political influences, and the opportunities that arise in this key is the ICT adoptions, for instance. Regarding port operations, um, the decision makers in this case is, um, would be a better understanding of how the port works and how this influences the choices. There are a lot of differences between ports. Each port have a type of specialization, could be product, could be simple geographical, geographically specialization, and business-to-business -business choices are more difficult to model, more difficult to identify, more difficult to reach who the decision maker is. So in this case, uh, the seaside, um, the choices could be from, from the seaside, from the port, the port, which port do I, as a, for instance, uh, a big shipping company, I use for exporting my goods, or how I, as a, as a sender, I want to export from which port do I use? And from the inside land is how do I reach this port? Um, that is high correlation in how many, um, how big my shipment is, um, 
how to use the container yards, how, when do I pick up my, my cargo. Uh, also, the models that could be available are operational research with an input uh, on behavioral models and how do they interact, uh, learning models or simulation, and also the barriers, especially in, uh, what is an important discussion is the competition and cooperation. Um, this is the, the concept of co competition, if you want is because uh, even though they don't share of this high competitivity, they would uh, potentially benefit on the sharing of information. And how do you do that regarding the privacy data and the lack of information and trust exchange? This brings part of the opportunity to how to understand how would the, for instance, a port community system or blockchain technology could be used for addressing this, um, this information sharing and uh, also to understand how the pricing strategies and how would they impact in the competition also related to, to the impact of operational research combined with the behavioral theory. Also another thing um, that uh, was highlighted is more uh, abandoning maybe the, the regional aspect going more to the city logistics is that e-shopping and crowdsourcing, the, crowdsourcing deliveries. So in this case, we have the decision makers available would be the consumers uh, bidding for new trips, uh, accepting, uh, setting up the, pick, uh, the picking up, the delivery, knowing about the time frames, the time, uh, the time frame constraints, or the companies offering services so being them how to special, if they specialize in one type of, one or more type of mode and how do they, uh, they do that. The choices, for instance, which in mode would be the, the new modes in this case, e bikes conventional vans, using drones if, if available, to also the choices that were addressed also in, um, in one of the paper presented, presented is the status of a real request. This brings also the problems of routing and fleet management and choice of, of which route to take and how many trips to, to make. Also this is the impact on on congestion and public transport, and also the opportunity for sharing deliveries. And well, the factors uh, affecting the um, decision making, this is uh, very uh, much oriented to the last mile, to the sh to short distances, the well, uh, cost, price, and time, the difference of goods, and also the possibility of any company using um, part of the mode as uh, branding or using that to show uh, a greener face to the consumers. Models also could be segmentation, we use, we use classical behavioral choice or simulation, and this has direct implications in what is sustainability, greenhouse gas effective, congestion, safety, and empty travel without uh, inefficiency they involve. And the barriers in this case, so what was addressed uh, were the novelty of the technology. Most of them have not yet uh, been implemented, such as for instance, drones, and how to, this is come the challenge, how to predict the uh, inductive demands. Uh, so there are few or no studies about real op operations, also because of the lack of sharing of data. So the opportunity here is to collect this big data and to model the consumer behavior. Uh, regarding automations, there were also a couple of, of papers over there. The decision makers could be the logistics service providers or the freight forwarders how to make either the, the decision to own or to use these uh, automatic trucks. And well, the factors affecting these choices are the purchase choice or the, the price that they might uh, offer. An operation that is, well, it was the funds that were a lot small sensitivity to cost and a lot of sensitivity to, to the ability for travel time and what is level of services. In these cases, since they are not yet implemented, we, we would have to rely a lot on SP data on simulations. And the opportunities and the problems is, well, the increase of the tracked on miles that uh, could be projected due to the, the introduction of trackless drivers and the impact on safety. Then that motivates the concern because if the track miles are increased, the impact of freight in global change will uh, be higher, so this is a concern also for policy makings. The employment and the social impacts of this, of the employment of drivers as 
uh, or back office workers. Also, the problems in the last mile delivery, how when they have a higher interaction with cities, how will this be addressed? Uh, well, the barriers or implementing of the understanding is the public perception of automated vehicles and regulations, current regulations about that. So, with all this um, um, list of issues and discussions, we condensed it into four projects. This very, very summarized, so we don't delay the, the posterior discussion. The first project is, could be the blockchain implementation within the supply chain, the willingness to adopt and risk analysis of this. Um, this is for, it was related to the share of information within the ports uh, and how this uh, increased information affects or could affect the information sharing and could affect the, the um, behavior of uh, within the port and within the ports. The second project um, is within last mile deliveries and these new technologies. So we, it could be chosen, we could be explained during the consumer side, the mode choice, if uh, I choose e-bikes because it's greener or I use some other type of crowd shipments. And also to the business side to understand which models or how do they adopt their business models and how is this related to which mode of transport do I offer to the, to the consumers. Um, the other project is related to track and, uh, automation to understand these person decisions and these um, exp um, the ones that, that move which, to uh, the adoption uh, of track automation as another mode choice. And the last project that was uh, highlighted is the port choice, because in the inland side is how to, the, um, how to model which mode I use and where do I share. And this has implications, these implications of hinterland competitiveness, hinterland being the area that each port has uh, more influence and how do in, let's say, frontier hinterlands, how do this competition between ports happen? This is important also to, for instance, for public investment or port authorities to focus their efforts. So, well, thank you for your attention.